Hey, welcome back to the National Post Speakeasy. I'm Marie Danielle Smith, and I'm here with John Iveson at the Metropolitan Plasky in Ottawa. Uh, since Justin Trudeau came into power, he's had to strike a delicate balance between pleasing people who care about the environment and pleasing people who care about business and building pipelines. Uh, there's a lot going on lately with Trans Mountain and this kind of spat between Alberta and BC. Do you think that's going well for him? Well, he's, he's tried to be, I mean, clearly he's enforced the idea, or not enforced the idea, he's backed the idea that the, the project has clearance from the National Energy Board and will be built. But I think he's been restrained in his support because obviously it's not going to go down well along the route of the pipeline, which happens to be se several Liberal ridings. I mean, this is going to cost the Liberal seats in British Columbia. So, so they've been kind of fighting with one hand tied behind their back almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly they want the pipeline built. Or maybe people and some people in Alberta think they don't want it built. They're mm. just paying lip service to this. But but really, right. if the if the proponent uh, Kinder Morgan decides, well, it's too expensive for us. There's too much uncertainty, too much political pressure. We'll just walk away. Some people in Alberta think that, that Trudeau might be quite happy with that. Mm. I'm not so sure. I think they've committed to the the uh, one pipeline being built. They were not not very enthusiastic about Energy East, but they want this one built on the west coast. All the economics suggest we have to get a pipeline built to the West Coast. Uh, you know, the, the American market is our only market right now. There's a $30 discount per barrel on every barrel of oil that goes down there. And the Americans are producing vast quantities of their own oil now. So we have to, to get offshore. We have to get to, to China. I think they realize this. But I don't think he's been quite as enthusiastic as he could be in making sure this thing goes through. So what should he do? I mean, if, if he has one hand tied behind his back now, what, how can he send that kind of strong? Well, I think, I think he should be there. He, w he went to Nanaimo, and I think that was the, the smart thing to do. He, and he stood in front of this town hall, and it was a very hostile environment. And I think he did okay as far as it went in defending the, the concept, the idea that the, the National Energy Board has given this thing the green light. The idea that, it, that at some point there has to be an end to these processes um, and I think he has to, to continue doing that, but I think he's got to be more vocal and he has to speak directly to the government of British Columbia and say, you cannot delay this thing any further. It's been reviewed and it's been given the go ahead. Do you think that the Premier of BC is going to stand up to him if he does that? I don't think so. I think that they've overplayed their hand somewhat. I mean, they have no further jurisdictional uh, viability here. I mean, I think if, if, if they tried to block Kinder Morgan, Kinder Morgan would go to the regulator, the regulator would overrule whatever the British Columbian government's doing, the same way they overruled the municipality of Burnaby when it tried to block. Mm. But, um, but I think that, that Trudeau needs to send a message to Horgan's government, which is somewhat half-hearted in this anyway, because Horgan's government is being propped up by the Green Party, and they're the people who are really opposed to this pipeline. I think Horgan essentially just wants to turn around to his base and say, look, well, we tried to stop it. Mm. And I think he can now do that. But, but essentially, the, the thing is done and dusted, and it has to be built. Mm. Well, we'll be watching closely to see what happens. Thanks for joining us on the National Post Speakeasy. We'll see you next time.